Hi folks and welcome to the preview show delivered by FedEx Racing. I'm Vince Gelini, seated alongside my good friend, senior interactive producer Bill Kim. Bill, good to see you. Yeah, in for Marty. Uh, he, in for Marty. Well, you know, who could really be in for I, Marty? I'm filling some very big shoes. I'm sure you'll do a I fine say. job. You, you always do. <laughs> hey, we're back to racing after a break for the Easter weekend and it's going to be an exciting week. The Samsung Mobile 500. We're headed to Texas Motor Speedway and a fast mile and a half quad oval. And Billy, when I say fast, I mean we're really going to be cranking yes. up. And this year, it's under the lights, just to add to it. Which makes it even faster. Makes it great stuff. Just the second race at Texas Motor Speedway under the lights in our official first night race of the season. We're not going to count Daytona on Monday night, jet dryers and all that good stuff. Tuesday morning. Uh, yeah, Tuesday into Tuesday morning, exactly. Uh, but uh, the interesting thing about this is um, not a lot of notes to go on here for these drivers and these crew chiefs. Like I said, just one night race at Texas last year previous, and then all of our practices this weekend are in the daytime, of course, because that makes sense, right? So when we get to the race Saturday night, there's going to be a lot of questions as to what these cars are going to be able to do and not do, and they're going to have to figure it out on the fly. Yeah, and for answers, why not turn to the man who's the points leader? Talk about going fast. He's been doing that all year long. Let's hear from the Biff, who tells us what to expect at Texas Motor Speedway. It has its unique challenges. Uh, you know, it's uh, not like any other mile and a half we go to. It's fast, and uh, the tires fall off. Handling's a premium. The back stretch flattens out really fast. I like that you can run the top, the bottom of the racetrack. So there's just so many opportunities at Texas. I, I just, I really like that track. Well, there you have it from Greg Biffle. And uh, since we're resuming racing and we're going to be moving into 14 straight weeks of that, why don't we Ooh. take a look back okay. at uh, some of the biggest surprises so far in 2012? Absolutely. Well, uh, we're six weeks in, and, and we just heard from our points leader, Greg Biffle. But who's that right behind him? Just six points back in second. That's Dale Earnhardt Jr., folks. We haven't seen this in forever. Uh, four top tens, three top fives for that 88 team. Dale Earnhardt Jr., very strong and a team that you got to just be very excited about right now is Michael Waltrip Racing. We have not seen this team, let's be fair, do anything so far in the Cup Series. A win here and there with Rudiment, but right now we've got Truex sixth in points. We got Boyer at ninth. Truex with a couple top fives, four top tens. And you look at Mark Martin, who's racing four races, done a phenomenal job too. Michael Waltrip Racing really making a name for itself right now, Vince. No, absolutely. And now some of the guys on the other side of the spectrum. <laughs> what, are, what are some of the big letdowns for you so far? Uh, yeah. Uh, first, I think you got to look at the Hendrick duo of Jeff Gordon and Casey Kane. Just not getting it done. Of course, Jeff Gordon led a lot of laps at Martinsville, but that's it and wasn't able to close the deal. Casey Kane has had some great cars, but he's sitting 31st in points. Just a ton of bad luck there. These guys are in some serious trouble to make the chase. They're going to have to get a lot of wins. A couple of other guys that I'm looking at is kind of a disappointment. Kyle Busch, very average right now, 16th in points. You can make the argument he's one of the best drivers uh, on the track each week. And then, of course, A.J. Allmendinger, not supposed to do what he's doing right now in that 22 car as he took over for Kurt Busch. Uh, a lot of expectations on A.J. Allmendinger this season, and so far he hasn't lived up to him. Okay, so this is a good chance to get yourself going. Okay, you get to Texas weeks, Motor Speedway. Yeah, that's Woo! right. That's right. You better buckle in. <laughs> Good time to get yourself going, but you don't mess with Texas. But what can you do to be successful in this race? Uh, Texas, step number one, you got to qualify well. Seven of the past 12 winners have started top five events. You got to be up front. Why? Because this racetrack, known for long green flag runs. We saw last year 114, 130-something. This race puts on a lot of long green flag runs. And uh, you want to be up front. You can get down really quick if you're starting in the back. That can't happen. Second point, Vince, adjustments, adjustments, adjustments. Like we said earlier, this track, you don't practice during the nighttime. So when you get these cars, this is your first shot under the lights at night. This track can be very fast. This track is very bumpy. And you're going to have to make a lot of adjustments on the fly. And without a lot of cautions, you don't get a lot of time to do that. So crew chiefs going to make their money this race. Yeah, and you talked about long stretches of racing. So that means that a lot is on the driver, obviously, but a lot of it's going to be on the car, too, performance-wise. Yes, absolutely. Week. Yeah, absolutely. These cars, you got to have them ready to go. Uh, you only get two practices, that one qualifying session on, on Friday night, and then we're going racing. And this is a very taxing track on cars because the speeds are so intense. Right. And you're going to see a few engines explode. 
I don't know if you like seeing that, but you're going to see it. I, I kind of do, actually. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Not mine, <laughs> but, but others. <laughs> okay, having said all of that, and it's great information, Marty. I mean, Bill. Ooh. Um, is that let, a compliment? No, that might yes, be a compliment. Yeah, 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 you, I, yeah, almost like you channeled Marty <laughs> Snyder. Uh, give me a pick to win. Will Ferrell, old school fashion. I don't even remember <laughs> what happened just now. Uh, I'm going to go with the, the hot hand. I mean, we talked. Uh, he was on the show earlier. We've talked about him a lot. That's Greg Biffle. Uh, this Roush Fenway team, absolutely fantastic on a mile and a half tracks last Last year at Texas this race, uh, Edwards, Kinza, Biffle, I think, think finished 1, 3, and 4. They just proved themselves over and over again on these intermediate tracks. Biffle's the hot hand. He's, his best track is Texas. I, I'm going to go with Greg Biffle. Yeah, I'm not surprised you're going to go with Greg I'm Biffle. I'm playing I know it you're, safe. I know you're going to ride that, ride that horse, <laughs> Ride that man. 16 all the way I, I got I you. Okay. I'll go with a guy who's won there, had a lot of success there, Matt Kenseth, who uh, just dominated in the spring race, yep. got his second career win. Uh, also, he has four runner-up finishes at Texas Motor Speedway and uh, nine top 10 finishes in his last 10 starts there. So I think he's a good, solid pick Pretty to solid. go in a, as well. He's been running very well this year. So there you have it. We're all done. And uh, you know what? It's time for some big boy racing. Let's go racing again, yeah. In Texas. All right, let's crank it up. Bill Kim, I'm Vince Cellini. Thanks for watching the preview show. Enjoy.